It is indeed not only a privilege, but an honor to stand before you tonight. Dr. Godina, thank you for the invitation. I am just a grateful person. I'm no one special. I'm just like any other person who wants to just say thank you. I want to make sure that I thank God Almighty first, and I thank my family. My family has stood by me through everything. I won't even say thick and thin, because it's been a lot more than that. My church family, my grandchildren who would come into my room in the mornings before they went to school, and talk to me, Macy and Asia and Erica. Those mornings and those nights when you were there for me, I thank you because you were younger and you took time out for Grandmama. And I thank you. I thank you ever so much. After losing my husband in March of 2018, a few months later, I was diagnosed with cancer. I lost him to lung cancer. And I thought that I would be able to help my children and my family heal, and I thought I could heal. But I soon found out that there was another route for me to take. When I was first diagnosed with breast cancer, I sat in that room looking at the doctor, and I saw the shock on my daughter's face. I felt the shock in my own heart. And one of the first statements that I made was, I have no fear. I refused to give the author of confusion the joy of knowing that he could have a grip on me. That is not my makeup. And 2 Timothy 7 and 1 tells us that it's 1 and 7, and it tells us that God did not give us the spirit of fear, but he gave us power, he gave us love, and he gave us a sound mind. And I thought to myself, God, if he gave us all of these things, why can't I use it? And so, having come through a spinal operation, being loosed from a stammering tongue, and now cancer, if I beat those things with his help, why can't I beat this with his help? So my subject to you is why fear when I am is here. I am the Lord Jesus Christ Almighty. That's powerful. And I know within myself that there are battles to be fought. I just didn't know what this battle was going to entail. I thought I did. I thought I had already fought battles in my life having gone through a body cast for a year, taken out of my life, trying to raise four children and a husband. I was like, oh my God, Jesus, what next? Yes, I raised him too. <laughs> but I say to you today that all things are possible. Doesn't he say that in his word? He says, through him, we can do all things, and I know this. I said that I was not going to cry. What did I do? So I'm going to try. <laughs> but I need these glasses, believe me. Thank you. Thank you. The great I am being God Almighty has taught me 
that life is not a bowl of cherries. When I was going through this battle, I thought a lot about Luke, and I thought a lot about Paul. They're not the only ones who had sicknesses and trials and tribulations in the Bible, but they were the two that I thought about an awful lot. If you remember, and the story goes, that Paul asked for thorns to be removed from his life three times. We don't know what they were. The Bible doesn't tell us. But I do know that they had to be significant for him to go to God for such a request. He was told that God's grace was sufficient. And I had to stop and think to myself, if God's grace was sufficient for Paul, and we serve the same God because he doesn't change, so why is it not sufficient for me? Well, I already knew that answer, but I still questioned. I said, should I ask him to take the cancer away, or do I ask him to take me through the journey? As I said, I already knew the answer. He said in Hebrews that he would never leave me nor forsake me. So that was my answer. I already had my answer. I asked him for strength to run the race. I asked him to put angels in my pathway. I believe in angels. And if you don't, just read Psalm 91, and it says, I'll send an angel to have charge over you and keep you in all your ways. He's true to his word. He will do that. He did it for me. I asked him to send me angels for guidance, and he did. I asked him to send them for protection, and he did. In Bible study the other night, my daughter-in-law said, don't stop praying. We never stop praying. We pray all the time about everything. I prayed then when I had the diagnosis, and I'm still praying now. I don't stop praying. Because you see, my battle is not over. That just started it. There are things in your life that will bring you to your knees. Your children, your marriage, your finances, your life, your health and your strength. Because without that health and that strength, the money, the possessions, the belongings don't have a lot of meaning. So I stopped and I took stock of what was most important to me. And I found that it was my faith in God, believing that he would take me through this, and knowing that what I believed, I could receive. When I went to Cone Health, they did not offer me a sure cure. However, they offered me the, the word that I would be taken care of, and they did just that. Dr. Godina, I know that you're not the one who hung on the cross for me. I know that. But in some ways, you did. Because I never imagined that I would have such a team of doctors that would care so much just for little old me. I'm so serious. They made me feel as if I was the only person in the world sitting in that room right then with the cancer diagnosis, and they were going to do all they could for me. They told me that they would give me the best of their knowledge, their technology, the medications, the concern, the devotion, and most of all, love and kindness. And they did just that. And I, I do appreciate it because that's what God does for us. He gives us 
all of those things and adds a little grace and mercy in there for us. And that is so good. It's good for us and good to us. The man at the gate called Beautiful in Acts 3, he was expecting something when he saw Peter and John. But Peter and John let him know, I think it was John, that silver and gold we don't have, but such as we have, I will give to you. They extended their hands, helped to lift him up, and said, walk. This team that Cone Help assembled for me, they extended their hands, and they helped me walk. There were days when I would get up in the morning and wonder if I was going to make it through that day. But I knew that I had to fight. I had to fight for my family, my church family. I wanted to see Asia graduate from high school. I wanted to see Macy do her senior year. And God has granted me that and more. He has granted me a granddaughter who has received her degree in film and script. He's granted me a grandson who has received his wings in, in becoming a steward. I have, been, I have been privileged to see a granddaughter graduate in <coughs> medical records. I've, I've, he has given me so much. He gave me what I asked for and even more. That's the way God is. When I entered into the center as a patient, the reception that I got, I can't even tell you what, because it's undescribable. I can't tell you, and you're shaking your head. It's, it's undescribable. I, I, I can't tell you what I felt. I can't tell you. All I know is that I was thoroughly pleased. I was shocked. Because many doctors, and bless their hearts, they have so many people to take care of now. It's almost unbelievable. But they treated me as if I was the only person that they were looking after at that time. I know I wasn't, but that's the way I felt. That's the way they made me feel. I would go in and I would see one doing one thing for me, one doing another thing for me. I didn't know, I didn't know what my future held for me, but I did know that whatever it was, I would be taken care of. I would go into Dr. Godino's office and Every time I went, and this is one of the reasons why I say thank you to my family, out of, all the, out of all the entire year, I never went to a treatment alone. I never went to a doctor visit alone. I had a child, I had a grandchild, or I had church family. I never went alone. Everybody loved on me. Everybody talked to me and let me know that I was not only wanted, but needed. And that is something that we all want. We want to be loved, and we want to be needed. And I was both. So I say to you, Dr. Godina, I am ever so grateful, and to all of you who are a part of Cone staff, you will never know how much you mean to people. We can say thank you all day long, but you will never, you will never, you will never know what you do for people. It's it's beyond 
being described. I want to leave you with several thoughts. One, there was a word that I, I used a lot during my journey, and it was infusion. Infusion has several meanings, but the one that I like the most is coming together when you infuse something together. I learned how to infuse my spirit with my medication. I learned how to infuse the word with the medication. I learned and it worked for me. I couldn't do anything without both of them together. So I, I, I leave with you today, use infusion in your lives. If you don't already, begin to do it because it works. Secondly, renew your mindset. Don't go into anything with a negative mindset. Go into it with a positivity that will take you miles beyond what you feel or what you know is your journey. Because that positive mindset will make you take one step today, another step tomorrow, and you will just continue to keep on stepping. Thirdly, believe and don't doubt. This is where my faith comes in. And without my faith, I'm nothing. For over 22 years, I have stood in church and every Sunday held up my Bible and said, this is my Bible. I can have what it says I can have. This is my Bible. I can do what it says I can do. It instructs me, it teaches me, and it guides me. I trust God. I trust God. God. I trust God. This is what we say each Sunday. And I thought to myself in the beginning of my journey, I'm about to see if I really do. He's about to see if I really do. This is something that I've said every Sunday. I say I trust him, and I had to stop and think that this is not something just to be repeated. This is something to live. Number four, believe in angels, because they really exist. I believe in angels. As I said, if you don't already, read Psalm 91, because angels are real. You're one of my angels, Dr. Kadena. You alone with a lot of other people. Cone Health, you are my angels. I really believe that you're not only mine, but I know that you're somebody else's too. And last but not least, if you give God your best, and I am convinced of this, I know this to be true because it works in my life. And at 77 years old, I stand before you not because I'm so pretty and not because I'm such a good person. I stand before you because I'm a child of God. And he looks after me. If you give God your first and your best, he will take care of the rest. Thank you very much.